Whatever happened to nifty 50s and plastic fantastic lenses? Remember in our DSLR days, 50mm lenses were tiny, they were cheap, they were light, and they were just fun to shoot with. Then we come to mirrorless, and this is the flagship Nikon 50. 50 mil f1.2, it's like 2,000 US dollars. It is optically spectacular, but it's so damn big, and it's heavier than the Canon, which is comically fat, but a little bit shorter than this one. Sony kind of leads the pack with a much lighter 51.2. Now, their Crone has been usurped, with Sigma bringing out a new 51.2 only for L and E mount at this stage, and it's even smaller and lighter than the Sony. So we're gonna check it out, compare it to a bunch of the other options on the market, let you know my thoughts, and see, you know, it is still several hundred dollars cheaper than these guys, but is it worth it to be going off-brand to get a smaller, lighter 50? Just for reference though, this is a 50 f1.0 with the hood attached, for full frame Leica M mount. So I'm gonna throw this in there as well. It's not optically brilliant, but it shows you this is small, but it's still not like tiny. Crazy, right? Mm -hmm. Right, let's go. Now, I think most people buy a 1.2 to shoot it wide open, and this is a perfect situation. It is so low light, you do get several stops of advantage over using a zoom, but just keep in mind, it is only half a stop more than an F1.4, or like a stop compared to an F1.8. I've found myself a lot today switching between human and animal eye detect to get the shots of all the cute puppies around here interspliced with shooting Felicia. Luckily, I have this camera customized because I know that's something I need to do a lot. If you're a Sony Alpha shooter as well, check out my new Sony setup guide. It takes you through all of the full frame range, every single physical control on the cameras, how to set them up initially once you get them out of the box, as well as a complete menu deep dive taking you through the literally hundreds of different menu options that allow you to fully customize these impressive cameras. Full details are below. Now, it's hard to know exactly, but it seemed like my Nikon was closer than the Sigma on the Sony. So maybe it's one of them's not a true 50. So let's have you and I not move our positions at all. I'm gonna shoot the same shot and we'll see if the frame changes. So yeah. I don't know if this Sigma 50mm is a true 50mm or if that's actually like a 46, 47mm lens, which could explain the slight weight savings as well. I don't know. Interesting.
So look, it's been fun to shoot with, no problems, it's not slow to focus, shooting it side by side with the Nikon, really no issues jump out. The doesn't look like there's any noticeable flare. Can't judge the image quality till I get it back in studio to take a look at, so we'll do that next. But as we were shooting, I got an email from my guy at B&H Photo that they're going to be sending me out the Sony 1.2G Master in a few days time. So we'll have to include that in this video as well. Several days later. I'm kind of getting lost between the two lenses. I have to get in studio and put them side by side, but handling wise, both equal, both sometimes get lost in the background with focus and need to be brought back again. Overall, the finishing on the Sony is probably a little bit nicer, but you can pretty much shoot them interchangeably. So just redoing that, and it definitely seems that there is focus breathing on the Sigma. The closer I get, the wider it seems relative to the others. It seems Nikon is the longest, then Sony, then Sigma. But it's not really scientific, so let's do it in studio on tripod. So is the era of the Nifty 50 back thanks to the Sigma? To be honest, not really. I mean, it's much lighter and smaller than, say, the Nikon, which is 1,090 grams. This is a good third less. And it's an ounce lighter than the Sony, so slightly. It's a bit longer, but narrower. Um, but it's a far cry from, you know, our 1.8 DSLR lenses that were 150 to 200 grams. It's still triple that. Having said all of that, it is performing really well. If you're a Sigma Art fan, then this is going to be great for you. Since the 35 and 50 came out for DSLR, God, a decade or more ago, Sigma have been really popular as a third party option. I'm quite jealous of Sony shooters that there are so many E-mount alternatives out there. I would love to see them come for the Zen mount. Probably I'm not as jealous as Canon users with no autofocus options still in 2024 is kind of ridiculous. Sigma, I hope you can sort that out for all of our benefit. Um, but if you are a Sony user, you do need to keep in mind that Sony artificially limits third-party lenses so that you get the best out of their lenses to encourage you to buy Sony's own lenses. Throughout this testing, I've had the chance to shoot with these guys on the A1, the A7R5, the A9 III, also I think the A7C II. I actually have all of the full frame cameras here at the moment putting together the finishing touches for that setup guide. Um, and the handling of them, the weight in the field, really I couldn't notice a difference. They're both focusing fine, really well. The, my strike rate was extremely high. Focus was always where it was meant to be when you got the cameras all set up correctly. Performing great. The one thing I noticed, oh, I should say, I just got an email before filming this that this is indeed a final production lens so I can give you sample files. So head on over to my website 
download them, check them out for yourself. If you like the look of the Sigma ones, then you can save several hundred dollars on the Sony. You can also check out my setup guide whilst you're there. The one thing I noticed when shooting was that it seemed the Sigma was either focus breathing or just wasn't a true 50 mil and it was something short of that. But when you're shooting in the field, you never know if you or your subject has slightly moved. So I came in studio, put the camera on a tripod, super boring test, but just shot photos at the back of my rear light there to check it. And yes, it is noticeably shorter, especially the closer you get. But I also put in the Nikon 50 and to my surprise, it is no, the biggest noticeable difference is that the Nikon is the longest, then the GM from Sony, and then the Sigma. And it is the closer you get, the more noticeable the difference is. Yes, they were all on tripods. Yes, they equalized the focal plane, not the front of the lens or anything like that, so that they were really comparable shots. The other thing I noticed to my eye, the Nikon has noticeably less vignetting. So whilst these guys are doing great in terms of detail and color, there's still maybe something to be said that size, especially of your front element and rear element, has some impact on your vignetting. And that maybe there is a slight compromise in a compact design that introduces focus breathing and potentially how they're so small and light is that they're not true 50 mil lenses. Let me know your thoughts on these guys, folks. If you are a Sony Alpha shooter, check out the setup guide. As I said, it takes you through all of the full frame cameras in the range, gives you a customization guide for different styles of shooting and camera settings files. Check out the sample files on these. Let me know your thoughts on how the images look and which one you would go for. And I'll see you guys soon.